Hi friends, in this short video, you will learn the ways to evaluate LV diastolic function in this advanced critical theory echocardiography series. I have already covered the eco assessment of LV systolic function in my previous video, and in this video, let's talk about LV diastolic function. Diastolic dysfunction means that the ventricles do not properly relax and become stiff, meaning they cannot fill with the blood properly. It is a common finding in ICU patients. About 20 to 50% of patients in ICU may have some degree of LV diastolic dysfunction. It is increasingly recognized as a common cause of weaning failure and prolonged weaning and also the reason for post-extubation pulmonary edema. Most common causes of LV diastolic dysfunction are acute myocardial ischemia and sepsis. Diastolic dysfunction can be evaluated by echocardiographic indices of LV relaxation or restoring forces, diastolic compliance and the filling pressures. The fundamental mechanisms of diastolic dysfunction are impaired LV relaxation, loss of restoring forces and increased diastolic stiffness and as a compensatory mechanism to maintain the cardiac output, the LA pressure increases indices of LV relaxation or restoring forces. LV relaxation and restoring forces may be evaluated by measuring E prime that is early diastolic lengthening velocity. Impaired relaxation is manifested by low E prime that means less than 7 cm per second on tissue Doppler. Then we study the LV inflow pattern by assessing the E and A velocities. How to calculate E prime? The E prime velocity reflects the rate of LV relaxation during diastole. This is measured using tissue Doppler imaging. And there are two types of E prime, septal E prime and lateral E prime. So commonly we measure the septal E prime. Now normal septal E prime is about 8 to 10 centimeter per second. Now let's understand the LV filling process. During isovolemic relaxation, LV pressure falls rapidly and when it has declined below the atrial pressure, a pressure gradient is developed between the atrium and ventricle and the mitral wall opens and the ventricle fills rapidly giving rise to E velocity. And during diastasis, the left atrial and left ventricular pressure are almost uh, almost equal. And transmitral flow occurs at very low rate. Finally, atrial contraction occurs, which leads to the uh, A wave. Okay, so next is A wave. So A velocity is due to atrial contraction in the later phase of diastolic filling. Both E and A are blood flow velocities and hence are assessed by the pulse wave Doppler. The sample volume is placed in the LV cavity between the tips of mitral wall leaflets. With transthoracic echocardiography, the flow of blood into the LV cavity on the apical four chamber view is towards the transducer. The E and A waves are positive deflections and normal E a ratio is 1.32 that means that E is always uh, e is most of the time bigger than A. Different mitral filling patterns are displayed in this figure. The pattern of impaired relaxation that is grade 1 diastolic dysfunction has low E and tall A. The pattern of pseudo normal filling pattern that is grade 2 diastolic dysfunction has low flow velocity similar to a normal heart but the different differences between the normal and pseudo normal filling pattern is the presence of E prime reduced E prime okay so if the E prime is less than 7 uh, centimeter per second and E is more than A then probably this is grade 2 diastolic dysfunction you can say the pattern with tall E wave very tall V wave with the short uh, deceleration, deceleration time is named as restrictive pattern or grade 3 diastolic dysfunction and this pattern this restrictive pattern is associated with reduced LV diastolic compliance.
now let's understand how to assess the diastolic compliance so in case of reduced diastolic compliance lv pressure increases for similar unit change in lv volume or preload in diastole hence pv loop becomes steeper there is an association between the reduced lv diastolic compliance and short e wave deceleration time e deceleration time is measured from peak of e to the point where e ends at baseline the e wave deceleration time normally is 150 to 250 millisecond the deceleration time indicates the duration for equalizing the pressure difference between the left atrium and left ventricle and if it is uh, less than 150 millisecond that tells you that the ventricles are not very compliant so reduced e uh, deceleration time and restrictive mitral filling pattern is suggestive of reduced lv chamber compliance now the third component of diastolic function is to assess the lv filling which is estimated using the ratio of the peak mitral inflow e wave velocity to that of the mitral annular tissue doppler e prime wave velocity with the elevated ratios associated with increased likelihood of elevated filling pressure so e by e prime ratio is very important on echocardiography it is best non-invasive estimation of lv filling pressure normal e over e prime ratio is between 8 to 15 if it is more than 15 generally abnormal regardless of age and is very strong evidence of lv diastolic dysfunction two more important indices of lv diastolic dysfunction in the setting of normal lv systolic function and normal mitral wall function an enlarged left atrium is a marker of diastolic dysfunction whether it is enlarged or not can be assessed on parasternal long axis view and also on apical four chamber apical two chamber views using the simpson method the more convenient method is parasternal long axis view uh, m mode is uh, adjusted to pass through the aortic wall to measure the greatest systolic dimension of left atrium measurement of tr jet velocity is needed when measurement of peak e and a velocity is not sufficient to categorize the diastolic function continuous wave doppler is placed across the tr uh, valve along the main axis of tr jet to measure the trv max if trv max is more than 2.8 meter per second that is abnormal now let's discuss the algorithm the practical approach to evaluate diastolic function as per ASC 2016 guideline. For the patients with normal LV ejection fraction, the guidelines recommend four measurement with cutoff denoting an abnormal finding for identifying diastolic dysfunction. Average E over E prime more than 14, septal E prime velocity less than 7, TR jet velocity maximum more than 2.8 meter per second la volume index more than 34 ml per meter square if more than three criteria are positive you can be very sure of diastolic dysfunction if less than two criteria are positive you can have a normal diastolic function if only two or three criteria are positive uh, indeterminate situation the transmitral left ventricular inflow is measured to look for ea ratio for the patient with the depressed lv ejection fraction the second algorithm is used with addition of EA ratio. In this algorithm, if the EA ratio is less than 0.8 plus E is less than 50 cm per second, then LAP is considered to be normal or grade 1 diastolic dysfunction may be there. If EA is more than 2, restrictive flow pattern and high LAP or grade 3 diastolic dysfunction is said to be present. In cases where EA ratio is between 0.8 to 2, or E ratio is less than 0.8 plus E is more than 50. This is intermediate situation where we have to go further to assess uh, for three criteria. E by E prime more than 14 or TR jet velocity more than 2.8 or LA volume index is more than 34. If uh, more than two criteria are absent, then you can say normal LAP or grade one test or dysfunction. If more than two criteria are present then you can think of high lap or grade 2 diastolic dysfunction up to 50 percent patient can have a diastolic dysfunction echocardiography plays a key role in diagnosis of diastolic dysfunction in critically ill patients because it is easy to use at bedside and can be repeated and it is a non-invasive way to do that 
In fact, the use of echocardiography to evaluate the diastolic dysfunction is a basic competence to be acquired during training in echocardiography in ICU. Thank you so much. Please subscribe to my channel for more educational video in critical care topics. Thanks a lot.